Hey everybody, I'm Kathy Hester and today we are going to make veggie dogs with real veggies, including Idaho Potatoes who's sponsoring this live and we're very grateful for that. So one of the reasons that even prompted this was that Light Life, which is a hot dog a lot of gluten-free vegan people ate, started putting gluten back in. They were never really marked gluten-free, so you know, <laughs> I guess they can do what they want to do, but now we're left without. And I'm just, if you're here, say something. Just, I see that people are here. I am going to put that on, see if I'm getting comments, which I seem not to be getting. So, we'll see. If I don't get your questions, I'll look a different way. Yes. Yay! I'm getting questions. Thank you. I, it just made me nervous because sometimes, you know, between all the internet gods, they decide perhaps I will not see your comments. And hey, Joanne, and hey, Dawn, of course, famous Idaho potatoes. Look, I have your best friend, Spuddy, here. Spuddy is in a carnivorous plant, but we'll talk about that a little bit later, too. And awesome, Linda is here as well. So, what we're doing, again, is we're going to make veggie dogs, right? So you think veggie dogs, that's going to have vegetables in it. Well, if you go to the store, sometimes they have soy protein isolate, they have wheat gluten, other things. Now, if you can eat wheat and wheat gluten, they're great dogs. And in fact, the dog I would recommend for this summer is Up Dogs, Upton's do um, Gluten Hot Dog, because I just love Upton's in the company. But if you can't do that, right now there is no easily accessible commercial gluten-free vegan hot dog that you can buy. So let's make some. So this recipe comes from my cookbook, Gluten-Free Vegan Cooking in Your Instant Pot. You can find it on Idaho Potatoes website, and you can also find it on plantbasedinstantpot.com. I'm going to be cheating and looking at my recipe. So let us let me show you a couple of things. First... Idaho potatoes. Another view of Spuddy. Hello, says Spuddy. Um, <laughs> and yet, Joanne, it was strange not seeing a comment from you. And these are the veggies that we're starting out with. I'm doing about half a recipe right now because <laughs> I already have a recipe, so I don't want to make all the recipes and have 80,000 hot dogs. Well, maybe I do. So, this is just a really cool silicone steamer that I like to use in my Instant Pot. And let me tell you just a second about how I cut these up and cook them. And in fact, if you want, if you go to Kathy Hester Cooks on Instagram, I cut these up and layered them. So you can see them there. I didn't want you to have to hang around for like two hours, so we're trying to take a few shortcuts. So, and I'm just going to put these in the bowl while I'm talking, speaking of shortcuts, right? So... You might notice that some of the veggies, like the beets, carrots are cut smaller than some of the potatoes. You may not even notice that. There you go. There's a nice hunk of potato. That's because they cook at different rates. And that just means my beets will be done you know, without my potatoes going to total mush. This is my handy dandy vegetable smusher. Hey, Helene, and oh, and Dawn, uh, I know this is Dawn, Zelda is saying, but it's, it's my friend Dawn, is saying they freeze well. They do freeze well, so I could make 80 bazillion of them, should I want to. So here's another tip, because you know I'm all about inclusive accessibility. Everybody can do this, so got some cooking for later. But I did those in the food processor, and it worked just fine. I did find that I had to add a significant amount more of dry ingredients. And we'll talk about this as we're doing our ingredients. So if you have some wrist issues or arm issues, um, you can't use a masher really well because the beets are hard to mash. You can use your food processor. Also, there's, and I'll try and um, put it up later. Marilyn, who also has um, some issues, found one with a spring, has a spring and another masher to make it easier. Because there is Marilyn right now. And so 
the beads aren't going to smush up as much. But here's the thing. I'm really proud that this has a lot of vegetables. So in here, let me pull this back to me to make sure I tell you exactly right, is two cups of chopped and pe well peeled <laughs> then chopped <laughs> Idaho potatoes. I used russets. But really, you could use any potato, and there are more to Idaho potatoes than just russets. You can get those cute little baby potatoes, purple potatoes, yellow fins. Any Idaho potato will work just as well. I do recommend if you're doing this by hand, have one with the holes and not the one that's with the S's. Oh, and so Cheryl says, my, aha. My mic is not using the wireless. Excuse me a moment. Well, I restart the wireless mic. Okay. Cheryl, is that better? I think I had a loose connection. So hopefully you guys can hear me better. So again, I'm smushing this. So it's one cup, two cups of Idaho potatoes that have been cooked, one and a half cups of beets, one cup of potatoes, and one cup of, yeah, there's a spuddy foot. Ooh, spuddy wants to see what's going on. He's like, this is where the action is. Because spuddy is a happening dude. So I like to see all these little veggies, and it's okay, they're gonna be a couple of chunks. Like seeing the beets in the bottom, they're chunky, but we're still gonna get the color. So the potatoes provide a lot of structure, and in the, in the actual dog, Spuddy, you can't have any yet. You just sit back a little bit and wait. All right, the sweet potatoes and the carrots add a little bit of sweetness. Beets, of course, add color. Everybody comes to the table with some extra nutrition. I just want to make sure we got that going. And it's going to start looking gluey, right? Do you see how gluey it looks? And that's okay. This is all of our wet ingredients for our dogs. And like I said, you can go a little bit crazy and mince them in the food processor. I pretty much got about the same. There were still some pieces of beet. And you'll probably be able to see it. I'm hoping we should be able to unwrap one of the ones I made earlier. So see how there are pieces in there. I'm gonna get rid of this guy. Oh, Ashley, it's so good to see you and Lisa. And uh, I love this. Marilyn sees some spuddy. We're going to measure out our dry ingredients. So if you're just coming on right now, what we're doing is we're making gluten-free vegan hot dogs. Hello, 4th of July. It's summer. It's cooking out. And I can't get gluten-free hot dogs anymore. And also, I, wanted, I brought these over here to show you. You'll see them a little bit later. But this is what they look like when they're done. So they're not perfect. I'll let you know, I don't spend 80 bazillion times making them meticulous, but see how they're nice and solid. They're, you would heat them up before you eat them. And we'll look at that and break it open. Let's see if I can get a better close up on that slightly, right? So they're not mushy, but they are, you know, not super firm as, they're not as firm as seitan would be or anything like that. So they're going to have, that's why we have to make sure we're making this Play-Doh sort of consistency to things. And Carla says, I don't mind texture. I think it makes them pretty. Now I will say this. So I did have a dog from a company called Yay Dog, D-A-W-G, and you can order them online and they are a hot dog with veggies. So if you can, if you can get that, that I kind of felt like the shipping was a little expensive. So we're going to go ahead and make our dry mixture. 
to go with our wet mixture. Dry wet mixture plus veggie wet mixture is going to equal kind of a Play-Doh clay consistency. It could be anywhere from super soft, like Play-Doh that's been out in the heat, to making it very stiff. Because we have so much moisture from the vegetables, you really can't go wrong. But we'll, we'll see. I know that I had to add a little bit more. So we're going to add, I think this is the brown rice flour. So because I'm doing half a recipe, I'm going to put a quarter cup. Normally it would be a half cup. And we may end up doing more because I think I didn't split the veggies quite so evenly. Oat flour. Oat flour also has some of that protein that we're looking for. And don't buy oat flour. Go ahead and take your gluten-free rolled oats, pulse it in your food processor or blender until it's flour, and you'll save yourself some money. This, I'm using quinoa flour. You could use teff flour. You could use soy flour if you want to do soy flour. What we want to make sure is that some of it is in introducing some extra protein into that. That helps stabilize things. Now, this is tapioca starch. Okay, so those are our four. And we may come back to this and add more because, again, a carrot fresh versus not is going to have more liquid in it. Also, vegetables that drain for longer than another time, so you may find from time to time, this will be your starting point, but it could change after that as well. And then we've got to get our flavor in there, right? Because else it's just like, well, that was nice, not, right? <laughs> So we've got all of our stuff in here, and because it's so white, ah, I'm blinded. So we'll just wait a minute. Yeah, it is kind of, kind of a, um, a great texture, it is. And um, let's see, Ashley says they look great. And Ashley also says, I recently went gluten-free due to doctor's advice and mock meats are hard if not impossible. And so Ashley, um, on Kathy's Cooking Club, where you can go to Kathy Hester, dot podia, P-O-D-I-A dot com. Um, I have actually a class where I make these and some gluten-free vegan sausages. So we use, I think we did three, three or four different base recipes. So I put some nutritional yeast in there. I'm going to go ahead and put salt or a salt substitute. Now, the salt substitute that I recommend using is cheap and you make it at home and you use one tablespoon of ground garlic or garlic powder, one tablespoon onion powder, one teaspoon ground celery seeds, mix it all up really good, and just salt to taste. So it may not be exactly the same. We're going to use some marjoram. We're going to use a teaspoon of marjoram. If you don't have marjoram, you could go ahead and use thyme or even oregano. Thyme, I, I think, would be a little bit better. And we're going to use a half a teaspoon of coriander, and this is a quarter teaspoon, so that's why I'm putting in two, but I do have a half teaspoon measure, so I'm going to cut it close. You're going to put some garlic, and even if you were doing that salt-free garlic onion seasoning, I still would add extra. But I do find that garlic and onion powder kind of mimic in your mouth what you're kind of getting from salt, that little bit of bite in your mouth. And that's one of the reasons why I like it. We're also using um, paprika. So I think it's a little less white and you can bear to see it from above now. <laughs> and we're gonna mix this mixture together really well. Oh, and Ashley's saying there is one gluten-free vegan meat in Canada to ex to get to. And here's the thing. Let's talk about that a little bit because it depends on your dietary limitations too, right? So what's kind of cool about these hot dogs is they're gluten-free as long as you don't use soy flour, right? Which is an alternative. They are oil-free. There's a salt-free alternative. There's no refined sugars. There's no really weird ingredients. You're seeing it all happen. Probably the weirdest ingredient and if you don't cook a lot, it might be coriander, but you can even get that at any store. So Beyond Meat is gluten-free. 
There are some other things that are gluten-free. I think Sweet Earth, who typically does gluten, also does um, now some pea protein products. Just be careful because sometimes the pea proteins are mixed in, for whatever reason, with gluten. So they should state really clearly that they're gluten-free or not. So there you go. Um, <laughs> I know, Mia says, what if the pitcher plant eats the potato? So we went on vacation and there are pitcher plants and actually, you guys have to see this one from above. Look, it's a Venus flytrap. So those are native to where I live. And you know how I love Halloween. So I was like, hmm. Okay, so we're gonna imagine this. Can you guess? Can anyone guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna put some of the dry ingredients in with the wet, like every recipe you've ever read in your entire life. <laughs> the reason to it's best to mix up these flours is that that way the seasoning gets everywhere. And the most important thing is flavor. You know what? I definitely would say when I put it in the food processor, it was much thirstier than this. And I can even save a little bit if I want to, to go on the cutting board. Now I'm not going to be able to just mix all this in. At some point I'm going to have to go in and get my hands dirty people. It's going to be exciting. I usually, <laughs> it's a heavy, hefty dough. Remember, we're talking play dough, clay, things like that. Okay. But I want you to notice that this probably wasn't even as hard as you thought it was going to be. This is, this is pretty much the hard part of mixing it together right now. And I squeeze all the way through to expose that wet part and then put it down in the flour. Okay. And it's not going to be this perfect little Play-Doh ball. And that's okay. It's going to be whatever it needs to be. And we're there for you, little dough ball of veggie goodness. Okay. <laughs> I kind of wish I had filmed doing this in the food processor because I had to use almost twice as much flour, which is why I was already kind of, so see, and it sticks. Arr. I feel like this should be a good Halloween show. Maybe for Halloween we need to do something else with potatoes and beets. What do you think, Spuddy? Because I've got some good potato recipes for Halloween, too. Okay. I try not to get too OCD about this, but I don't like wasting too much of the batter. So even though... I'm going to grab this dough again. I'm going to wash some of this off because this hand touched a lot of the really, really, really wet part and it's going to be stickier. So again, if you just came on, what we did is we cut up and steamed some vegetables. We smushed them after we let them drain for a while. And then we mixed them with our dry gluten-free flour and spice mixture to get the beautiful dough that you see before you. Yes, yes, Dawn, you can do all that in the food processor. <laughs> Someone wasn't listening. She's my friend, so I can say that. Um, so what I often do still is keep this in here. All right, let me see how we can do this. So see how... Now I really can kind of mix this up and see how it's, do you see the consistency that we're kind of looking at? Not a lot is sticking, some is gonna stick. We're not looking for perfection, right? And then I, I often do a third of a cup, but I'm gonna do a quarter of a cup because I kind of am wanting these to be smaller. It does not need to be perfect, literally, and if, there, if it gets in more and it starts to stick, I'm just going to use it to get the dough at the bottom. Okay, let me move this forward so you, can, you don't really need to see the scoops as much as you need to see the whack. Because when you read the recipe, you're like, that's a whole lot of work, lady. What are you trying to get me to do? 
And then once again, I say, see how it's sticking a little? So I'm just going to get that spatula in there. And if things are getting stickier than I like, I could put some flour on the board. There's nothing wrong with that. That almost sounded like the nutcracker. Dun, da, 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 dum, bum, 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 bum. And I've had no caffeine, I tell you, none. Okay, so let's see. I think this may be enough left over for one more. Let's see how that fits in. So in the end, I usually kind of scrape around. And now I'm probably going to just steal from a few of these guys that look a little bigger. And you could make jumbo dogs by using a third of a cup, but I'm a little more into this. Okay, and let me get to some questions too. Um, <laughs> Don was saying, Rob would never do it that way as far as mashing it. And if you have back issues, arms, wrists, you don't have to mash it. Just realize you may have to use up to twice as much flowers. And what I do, what I did for the others, literally I reached around and put in a quarter of a cup at a time and just kind of switched them out. So don't let that, um, don't, don't let that freak you out. It'll be okay. And Mary, uh, Al Mary Allen loves this idea. Joanne says the color is great. It looks like Maine Rab's, Maine Red Snapper Dogs. I must do some research. I wonder if they have something different in the flavorings. Okay, so we're going to talk about this for a minute before we go all the way there. You know I'm getting, it's going to be okay. It's all going to be okay. I'm moving some of my flowers. Let's move my Venus flytrap. This is the part that scares people, okay? Do not be scared. I am here for you. So we are going to roll these up. I do like to have a dough scraper in case I need to scrape this off. I have cut up parchment paper into somewhat consistent sort of sizes. And sometimes it goes bad. Look, look at that. In fact, we can even rip that off. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't spend a lot of time doing this. Literally, I fold it over, cut, fold it over, fold it over, and then that's when, when things go crazy. I usually make too many, and then I save them for the next time. That makes my life happy. I also have cut foil. You don't have to have cut foil. It just makes life easier. You can get um, those on Amazon. I buy the parchment pay, um, sheets that fit right on your cookie sheet. That makes it really easy to cut too. Hi, it's Sandy. Woo! We're gonna make we're gonna make veggie dogs when we come to your house. That's Cheryl's mama, everybody. Um, and then let's see. And Lisa, so I when the veggies were in the beginning, it was already cooked. I cooked the potatoes, sweet potatoes, carrots, beets. Did I leave anything out? One, two, three, four. No, I said all of them in, together in that um, steamer. And then I drained them. And so when I grab them with a, a cup, you, they just kind of fall apart and they kind of, everything starts turning red. So that's why you think you didn't see any beets. And it's true, you can get all my Idaho potato recipes because I love me some Idaho potatoes and some cute spuddy buddy. So there we go. Oh yeah, my yeah. The other thing that's really good too. That's a great point, Linda. Is the vegan potato breakfast sausages because those are also gluten and soy free. So they're really great to, and they're oil free as well. Ah, Joanne, I sent a so if she wanted this, she was saying these dogs from. I need to look back, Maine. Um, had a snap to them. One of the things you could do is you could get like rice paper, soften it, put it around the dog, and you could air fry it, and that might give you a good snap. Linda, you are here to help, and I appreciate it. 
Um, is there a reusable option to the parchment, paper, and foil? Okay. There is, and I don't like the option. So I will tell you that. So I know those of you who are no waste, and honestly, I didn't even find them. If you go to Amazon and you look up silicone sausage, basically it's a little mold, kind of like an egg bite mold, and they're like little sausages, but they're almost, they're so thin. You would have to put two to three per hot dog bun. I haven't found a bigger one. I used it in the sausage class that I taught that you can get at kathyhester.podia.com. So you can use that. So if you are no waste, do that. You, other things I haven't found, because here's the thing, and we'll talk about this a little more as we're going along. We'll talk about why we're doing this, and then if you can help me come up with a better idea, then we can. I'm gonna get all of my pieces of foil, so that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So the paper afterwards, you might be able to compost. The foil is just foil. So I don't know that, I'm using a very thin foil. This is more of the foil that they wrap up sandwiches with. So I think that you get a little less loss with that. But it is, um, it is what it is, you know. Um, yeah, Joanne said the other potato state, Maine. But there, and that is my Instant Pot not saying, hello, call the police. I don't know why it's made a new noise now. It's like, hello, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Okay, great. Lisa's got that. Yeah, Joanne said too, they're, the silicone molds, they're really tiny. So to me, it almost makes something that's more like a breakfast sausage link longer. So that's why I think of that. You might be able to use your Excalibur mat. See, here's the thing, we're steaming them. You could try, I, and if you try and let me know, I totally will um, update this. So this is how I do it. I try to have all my stuff here. I have my, sorry, the foil is binding you. I'll try. <laughs> Okay, so I like to have my little work area, and I'm not going to go, it doesn't have to be perfect. It can look a little bit wonky, and because when we're putting them in this tight constraint, they're steaming, so they're actually gaining some of that water, that liquid. So I'm going to take a piece of this. Usually I like mine to be about the same length, right? So, and you can push it around. I'm going to roll it up here. Then, <laughs> take this piece of foil, and then I roll it up. And this is the part people think takes a very long time, but in fact, this is kind of the easy, <laughs> if each thing is easy, then you want to really, you know how the hot dogs have that little thing on the end? Let me grab one. And they have this in packages too, right? Something. A little more formed than that, but um, that's what we're making here. So you want to make sure that that's, you're feeling where the hot dog is, and then you're twisting it, okay? We'll put that over there, and we'll keep going for these, and then I'm going to show you, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this on camera. I don't think I can roll them backwards, but we'll see. And if you have this at a decent Play-Doh consistency, it, it takes much less time to roll it out. Now, it's still wet. There's still some moisture and things on my hand. So it doesn't need to be completely dry. And it's also okay that I'm getting little hot dog fingerprints all over this because it doesn't matter. So you don't need to wipe off your hands in between. Let's see, I will look and see. Um, yeah, oh, that's a good, good point too. So <laughs> I'm like, I can't touch my computer right now. That one's a bitty hot dog. That one's a baby hot dog. 
But Joanne is saying, remember not to roll them too tight, and I'm not. So see, there's some room in here. It's not just super tight because they can blow out, meaning they are going to expand because we're steaming them. Okay. And what I can do, actually, I'll go ahead and show you this. Let me just put a little bit of flour on here. I'm going to have fingerprints on everything. It's going to look like a child was in my kitchen. And so you can also do it like this. This is how I did it in the book. And the picture in the book is this way because I was trying to be all fancy and have everything pretty. But it's okay. It's okay either way. But if it starts sticking to a point where it's making your life difficult, we'll get to... Okay, this way. <laughs> Sorry, there was a cloud and you got some reprieve from, um, from the aluminum foil blinding. Let me, I'll look over here. Um, <laughs> Mia being Mia. So because Mia is being Mia, I'm just, Mia is the basil lady. She is offering me basil already. Remember, she's my basil hookup. And she wants to know when we add chocolate chips. So I will be sure to give her that look once my hands are clean and I can change. <laughs> and look again. So again, I can take a little more flour, put it out. And this is all about your comfort. Once you taste these, if you're like, I think they're too mushy, then maybe you want to add more. Um, flowers than I do. And you can. Think of this as the base recipe. So someone was asking if you could leave out one of the vegetables. And you sure can. Out of the four vegetables, if you need it, if you're allergic to carrots or sweet potatoes or something like that, you certainly could leave them out and just add other veggies instead. Just try and replace it with something similar. For instance, the beets are red. You could put red carrots in instead of the beets, right? If you, I don't think you taste the beets. Cheryl eats them, and Cheryl is not a beet lover. You could um, put extra carrots. If you didn't have sweet potatoes or you didn't have carrots, you could use one or the other of those. So you definitely can play with this recipe. If you don't have one of the flowers, the only thing I would say is to make sure you have one of those higher protein flours like quinoa, um, teff, soy. That just really helps. It helps with the texture and the protein in it. And that's the only one I would be, and again, you've got a bunch of options. If you are gluten-free, you probably have one of those flours. And it, teff, I have a bunch of recipes for Teff, actually, on healthy, slow cooking. My gluten-free brownies are crazy good and made with Teff flour. So I always have Teff, but I had some quinoa I really wanted to use up, so that's why I like doing that. Um, I know, I'm going to have, I'm, you could also, let's talk about that. So red, the red stains on my hands. If I wanted to, and you eat oil, you could easily, when you're cutting the beets or doing this, put oil on your hands. When you're cutting the beets, be kind of careful because you don't want to oil your hands so much that the knife sticks. But if you put a light coating on your palms, I kind of feel like my beet hands are like a badge of honor. And I am going to rinse my hands off, and then we are going to show you about steaming these puppies. But do you see how easy that was? It sounds, if you read it, it's like, you want me to cook vegetables and mash it and mix it with some other stuff and then do this and do that? Or are you just the meanest person ever? Perhaps. Perhaps I am. <laughs> no. No, I would like to think I am not the meanest person ever, but... It's worth it. And so this is just half a batch that I'm rolling. It makes like 16 dogs. So you're going to make some for your cookout and you're going to put some in the freezer. Let's say you're having eight people over. Make a double batch. Get a, get a helper. 
it's really, they're really just not that hard. Okay, Spuddy, let's move you a little bit. And let me show you. Woo! Poor Spuddy. Let's see if we can. Nah, that's not going to work either. <laughs> okay, Spuddy, sit here and watch. Let's see what we got. I know. Marilyn. I'm so jealous. I'm Marilyn and Joanne are adopting me because they're both so awesome. But let me see what I've missed food-wise. And Cheryl is becoming a food adventurer. I know, it's crazy. It's crazy wonderful for me. Um, thank you, potatoes. I think you're awesome. Okay, oh, Gina's here, yay, hi, Gina. And Linda said it's lunchtime here in Ohio. Oh, I know. French fries, a little hot dog. That's what the air fryer's for. And I'm going to show you how to cook these as well. Because, um, <laughs> yes, these are not cooked. These are just ready to go. Think of what we're doing now is getting them to where they're in the package. We're going to put about a half a cup of water to a cup. If you're using an 8-quart, you could also just put in your steamer basket. I don't really want it to go too much on there. It's okay if they get a little wet. But the steamer basket is kind of how I decide where the water goes. But it needs to be at least a half a cup for a six quart to come up to pressure. And we can talk a minute too about if, <laughs> if we need these. So a lot of times I'll take this. There we go. And I bend them a little bit. And you can put them on top of each other. We're going to do a second layer. Usually I do them like this. And then I do them across. They're quite light, so they don't really dent or weigh in on there. But that is, that's all it took to put it in here. Oh, that's awesome, Kylie. Thank you so much for coming in today. It is beautiful to see your face. Um, so we're going to put this in here. And I just wanted you to see how I gauge some things. So the, uh, if another steamer is lower, I might use the minimum. But if it comes up a little bit, it has to be half a cup for a six quart instant pot. It could be up to a cup for an eight quart, and you could do a little less for three quart. And then we're going to cook these on high pressure for 35 minutes. And again, this is a fancy dancy instant pot where you need to click the start button and make sure it says on. If you have a, just an instant pot duo, you don't have that, and that's wonderful. That is not a bad thing whatsoever. So let's turn this over and let's look at some hot dogs that were cooked. Okay, uh, and Joanne says she bought the silicone basket I used in class, and I believe she is talking about this one that is full of the veggies, because I cooked the veggies in there. This is a really nice one, because you can even stand them up almost all the way around and like that instead of, or do them in layers. So this is a really good one. Um, and it also even kind of folds down when you store it. So these guys... Is, this is the other half of that recipe that was made that was really pretty wet. So I'm going to release the pressure. And I want to tell you a story while we're releasing this pressure. <laughs> and if you don't have an Instant Pot, you can make these. You totally can make these. You would just cook the vegetables on top of the stove, right? And then instead of steaming it like this, you could have a stock pot and a steamer and steam it on the stove. You're probably going to want to steam them about an hour. So these are going to be quite hot when they come out. So I'm going to take a couple over here. And Marilyn says she has some water container, like the water container I just used. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. And I use them for things as well. 
Oh, Marilyn says, or not Marilyn, Joanne says there's a storm coming through. So let me let you see how this one looks, actually. That might be more helpful. So this one was packed a little bit differently. That's an OXO strainer, right? And I could also, forgot that I did one that has a handle. I could just take it out like this. It'll open up, right? And now these are cooked. Typically what I do is I let them cool off a little bit. And we'll let this, we'll see how hot it is. This one's cooling off fast because I've got the air conditioner vent right here. Let's make sure this is getting clear. Okay. Make sure that it's cool enough to touch. Like as we're getting into the middle, it is not as cool. Okay. That's going to go in the trash. And this is kind of what it's going to look like. This I added extra flour, so it's not, it's actually going to be a little more floury. I went a little bit too far with that, I think. So let's see about one of these guys. But it's going to be good either way. So either way, they're going to look kind of weird. And then I let them dry. So these are the ones that got it in the food processor. So they're not as chunky as these. See how it's more uniform color, depending on who you're dealing with, picky eater wise or kids wise. I really like the, I really like these guys better. So I will tell you that you can do them in a food processor. I would do them a little less and I would be planning on rolling them a little bit wetter because they were much wetter and I think I'm, you know, it's still not bad. I'll let you see the inside. These are going to be more dense, though, for sure, compared to something like this. So the ones over here are going to come out a little wetter, and usually they're just wet in a sheen sometimes, depending on how, how hot or whatever it is. And then this is how we cook them. It's really easy. So I'm going to make a hot dog. I'm going to take this. I'm going to put it in my air fryer. I'm going to air fry it for about five to ten minutes. And there you go. <laughs> right? That's easy. So when we're talking about buns and gluten-free buns that you can get, I want to talk a little bit. Like the ones that are in the picture on the website are these guys. These are Odole, Odo's. I don't know where I saw them, but I had some in the freezer. They have like those bagel thins and other things that are gluten-free. My favorite is Little Northern Bakehouse. Um, and I really like those a lot. But they don't always have them. When they do, sometimes they have them at Earth Fair. And I found this other bread that's like Green Light, L-I-T-E, that's from Israel when we were on vacation at one Whole Foods in Asheville. We went to a different one and they didn't have it. So that's the other thing that you're gonna get into is finding the vegan gluten-free buns. But if you don't have one, you can use a corn tortilla. You could put it in a lettuce wrap. You could do it the way we did it when I was growing up and there were no hot dog buns and you just took a slice of bread and wrapped it around. So there's all these other ways that you can go ahead and do that, should you need to. And let's see if there's any, yeah, the chunkier ones look more like sausages. They do. They definitely do. It'll be interesting because you can eat them now. They're just not going to have the same pleasant texture as when you air fry them. I wouldn't say no to those. And this one to me, when, it, when you mash it, I think it gives a better texture. A little bit. It's just not quite as dense. So if you do it in the food processor and the dough just isn't getting, it's, it's going to soak in and soak in and soak in. I think at some point you've got to let it be really fairly wet. Have um, a bowl of water 
so that you can wet your hands, then work with the wet dough, then you can roll it up. I think that's a better choice. I know we are in time of celebrating National Hot Dog Month, so thank you Idaho Potatoes for letting me know that. And the thing is, is potatoes are amazing. And why not put them in our veggie dogs? I'm just very excited to have, you know, and see for me, I love the way you can see the little beets and things in there. And that's been a couple minutes. I'm gonna throw this bun in there. Usually what I do is I open up my hot dog bun so it can toast in the air fryer at the same time. And you can put any kind of toppings on here you want. So I did for the post, I did a Chicago dog, which was onions, mustard, and tomatoes and pickles. And Carolina style is with chili slaw, mustard and onions. And then I did, I called it kid style, but it's kind of Cheryl. So Cheryl likes mustard and ketchup on her hot dog. The end. Okay, so I'm gonna get this. Just gonna turn it a little bit. Put this guy in here. I can open them up a little bit. Maybe we should get some mustard out. So what do you guys like on your hot dogs? That's what I want to know. I've got some onions. I'm big on onions. Let's see, mustard. And I think I want to do some dill relish. Because... Thanks for hanging out with me while I eat lunch, by the way. <laughs> I can move these, move these guys over here too. I have such a big space, but it's never big enough. So Joanne likes mustard and onions. Who else wants to tell me what you like on your hot dogs? Because I really want to know. Relish and mustard or sauerkraut. Sauerkraut is a very good choice. I definitely am feeling the sauerkraut for sure. And what you're going to notice too, I'm going to, I want you to see the difference between the dog when it's before it's in the air fryer and after, because you're going to be really I don't know if you're going to be impressed, but you're going to be like, mm. <laughs> I see why she does these things now. Let's see. Just want that little bit more toasted. This guy needs to go in a little bit longer. Okay. It's not a microwave, Kathy. It's toast. It's an air fryer. What do we got? Yeah, beanie weenies are good, and actually, probably the ones I made a little more hefty, I'm going to make, make beanie weenies. And so those of you who may not be from the United States, and might be, what is this thing that you're calling beanie weenies? It's cut up hot dogs and baked beans, and it's, it's what we feed to children <laughs> and, and grown-ups. Actually, Cheryl made some beanie weenies um, with some of the hot dogs I made last week, too, which is kind of fun. Oh, Carla. Kimchi, potatoes, thin, thinly fried tomatoes, jalapenos, and onions. When are you making me my hot dog? How about this? Let's make a deal. When I come to you, I will make you the veggie dogs if you make all the fancy toppings. What do you think about that? Joanne has never had beanie weenies. And Lisa likes mustard, onions, relish, or spicy mustard and sweet sauerkraut. Mm, that sounds really delicious. Mustard is really important. I like onions for the bite. Um, and Cheryl doesn't like onions anyhow, so the idea that I eat raw onions really kind of freaks her out. Uh, I can do either dill or sweet relish. I'm doing dill, and I'm doing plain old yellow mustard. I also, I have some Amy's chili, and so I'll make a quick coleslaw, just like you could use your food processor or just, it's almost easier to chop up thinly sliced cabbage and kind of just chop it across. I usually use green and red if I have it. Maybe throw in some shredded carrots, 
Mix that with a little bit of vegan mayo, mustard, salt, pepper, and a little bit of celery seed, ground celery seed. Um, and then I'll put that on top. I usually keep some Amy's chili around just for hot dogs or making impromptu like queso chili dips. You know, just Amy's chili is good chili. <laughs> and so she said she never had meaning ways. And Jeremy, oh, it's so good to see you, Jeremy. I hadn't seen you. <laughs> Jeremy says, consider yourself privileged that you didn't have beanie weenies growing up. <laughs> Idaho loves all of what we're saying. And Carla and I have made a deal. So I'm going to get the fancy hot dog toppings just by making these hot dogs, which seriously I've made over and over again. Pro I think the cleanup is a little harder. So if you get somebody, be like, I'll make you hot dogs if you clean them. So it's going to be harder for me because I have a food processor bowl. But really, right now we have two bowls, some spatulas, and the Instant Pot is going to be super easy. I'm going to check again. Yeah. And I'll let the bun, yeah, that's definitely warm enough. Let's look at this for a second. So see, and I don't, you can see it got browner, but it also just looks way more appetizing, right? The brown, it may, kind of makes a little bit of a skin on this, on the top part. Not as snappy as the ones that Joanne was talking about, but fairly snappy. Like that looks a little bit like, hmm, you wouldn't want to see that on a plate, but you're like, yeah, that looks pretty good. So you, these are very stable though. They're not just mush, right? I can move it around, I can shake it, it's not breaking, which means I can put that on a grill, an absolute grill. Okay, so let's get this guy in here. It's gonna stay where I want you to stay. Let's put some mustard on there. Lots of mustard. Yum. This will not be as pretty as the food style <laughs> one. <laughs> I'm not, unless you want to like hang out for about 20 minutes while I use tweezers to move the relish. <laughs> but this is the one that you're seeing me prepare my real lunch, which is never as pretty as the food that I put on the blog. Right? And then I'm going to take some onions. And sprinkle them on top. I like onions for that little bite of sharpness that I think it goes so well with the mustard. But you could use ketchup or anything else that you wanted to for sure. And Joanne says it's surprising since they came in a can and my mother cooked best when a can opener was involved. You're, yours and mine too. I grew up in the 70s where food was a mystical thing that came out of boxes, cans, in the freezer. Um, and Karen says her mother used to cut up hot dogs into sauerkraut and serve it with mashed potatoes. Ooh, that sounds really good. Idaho potatoes, do we have a recipe for that already? Because maybe, maybe I need to, need to work with that. Because I, I like that idea. That's kind of like beanie weenies, only potatoes are the starch instead of beans. Um, <laughs> Joanne says, eat the evidence. Arr, it's going to be so good. I just got to make sure it's cool enough that I'm not going to, like, pah, it's too hot to eat. And Karen said her mouth is watering. Here, I'll, I'll do the overhead again so you guys can let's see if I can hold up the dog without having it fall over now that I smushed it. Hello. Here, Spetty, what do you think of the hot dog? Spetty likes the hot dog. He wants one for lunch, so I'll give him a mini dog. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Mary Allen says, ketchup, mustard, and sweet relish. That sounds delicious, too. There's no wrong way to eat a hot dog, right? And um, Carla says, my grandma did, too. And famous Idaho potatoes, we think we're on to something. I think there may be, maybe this will be like, the bride of Frankenstein, the bride of 
veggie hot dog winter dinner <laughs> series, right? Because I could, we can make, we can make, beanie weenies would be better served over mashed potatoes or a baked potato that's cut up. Like, actually, that would be really good for a camp out to roast your potatoes in the campfire, heat up some beanie, heat up, you know, some baked beans, grill your hot dogs, your vegan veggie dogs. I can see that, and then I can see with the sauerkraut, the mashed potatoes, and the hot dogs. Oh, I like that. Um, Jeremy says it looks delicious. Oh, I love this. Linda says it sounds like an Oktoberfest recipe. I've just got to think of a way to dress it up for Halloween, too, but you know, just give me five minutes. I'll figure it out. Um, it's funny. I like this tater weenies. <laughs> <laughs> that's all and this is what these are right because there's more potato in here than anything else Joanne says I love sauerkraut or um, cabbage and potatoes yeah who doesn't right it's amazing and um, Melissa Ann says that looks yummy Joanne says it looks yummy I say it looks yummy Karen says it sounds good loaded potato with your dogs would be awesome right you know, I have several potato salads over on Healthy Slow Cooking. Um, and one is an Indian potato salad that could be very good. But there's also a Brazilian potato salad that I did for Idaho potatoes, which in fact is like southern potato salad with some vegetables. So I think it has carrots and peas, but it has they have egg in their potato salad. So I used some kalanamak or black salt which really brings this eggy sulfur flavor. So I use it in scrambled tofu. I use it in tofu egg salad, anything I want to bring the egg. So that's what I did with that potato salad. So be sure to check that recipe out. You can also find it on the link that Linda left about where all my recipes are on Idaho Potato Commission site. Let's see. And Melissa said she missed the process. I'll have to something's over it but the replay is going to be up in a few minutes after we go and it's going to be up on Facebook as well as YouTube and then I'll try and share it into the groups restream isn't let me share directly into the groups actually it's Facebook isn't let me share directly in the groups through restream um, and Dawn says my mom doesn't love sauerkraut and oh hi Deborah that is awesome. I'm glad you had, I hope you had a lovely walk and you're able to join me for the beginning of my lunch. And Melissa says, we love Indian and tofu. I know. And so the Indian potato salad is wonderful because it's chickpeas and potatoes and chutneys and deliciousness. I make it ahead of time when it's a super hot part of the year. So Dawn, who lives in Houston, can make it now. Those of you in the Pacific Northwest can probably make it now. <laughs> and that way I'm eating a cold lunch straight from the fridge without heating it up. And it's delicious. My friend Kalpana, who had an Indian restaurant, taught me about the dish. And I just, it's, it's a huge, huge fan. And Marilyn says she's eating a baked Idaho potato now and she wishes she had some dogs to go with it. I wish I was close enough to give you some dogs. Because I've got about 23 more minutes and I got eight more dogs coming. But do you guys have any questions at all about anything? Because if not, I think I'm going to eat my lunch. Do you want me? I can take a bite, but I'll take a bite after I say goodbye and I'll chew because it's, gonna, it's just a bun and a mouthful. But um, if you have any questions about the recipe, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Let me know. You can get it at plantbasedinstantpot.com. If you can't find it, just click on the little um, magnifying glass and look up hot dog and it should come up really easy. And if you have any questions about this or have some substitutions you need to make, just let me know because these are for everybody, just everybody. Yeah, and it is all about the Idaho potatoes. Ah, good question, Carla, right before I was taking a bite. Arr. How long do they keep in the freezer? I think they'll keep for several months, like probably three to four months in the freezer. Once you, even if they get a little bit of ice on them, 
Once you throw them on the grill or in the air fryer, it's going to kind of knock that off and it's okay if it, it won't really affect the texture that much and it shouldn't affect the taste at all. Awesome. And Lisa says, thanks for a great recipe. Well, thank you guys for being such a great audience. And I would love to see pictures of your veggie dogs that you make. So if you can't post them on one of the platforms like Instagram, um, Facebook, or somewhere like that, you can email them to me at kathyhester at gmail.com and I will post them somewhere with your permission, of course. Okay. Awesome. And you're like, Joanne, who knew you could make hot dogs from potatoes? Huh? I didn't know till I did it. And I was like, I wonder if this works. And it does. And it's beautiful. And it makes it just the right texture. It's really hard not to eat this. Okay, awesome, guys. So I am going to take a bite and then go away. Hmm. Happy lunch.